Hey guys, welcome to an episode in which we might actually learn something valuable this time. Now we're coming off a series of episodes I hope you enjoyed. Um, we spent a couple of um, days filming with Luther Fred Wallachie who showed us a guitar that was not from a yard sale even though I used clickbait and then we learned in the follow-up episode to that what it was worth check that up there a playlist a minute with Fred you'll always learn something when you're dealing with Fred now following that we did an episode in which we made a shellac or a guitar finish out of believe this or not sap that oozes out of a certain type of eucalyptus tree that is red and it's called Kino and you guys know that I make finishes out of all kinds of things Mississippi dirt uh, oak galls from California oak trees and now we have this reddish stain shellac that comes from a eucalyptus tree in California now the goal is we are going to do this ES 175 ish single cutaway Florentine cutaway left-handed model this is actually going right to Tammy you all know Tammy so we've got to have a way to put this on um, I will make a, a an episode up of us actually applying this stuff but I've got a couple other guitars going on. We're still working on Wayne's 53 Michigan license plate guitar. A couple other things. But I'm going to do the finish on this guitar and let it get real nice before we do the rest of it. After, of course, I cut uh, the pattern out of this paddle on the headstock. But we want to have this one finished before we put it together. And then we'll do some touch-up on it after and make the final application of the shellac and we're going to use a French polish technique that's what uh, Fred was explaining when he was doing that fabulous guitar we looked at so let's get to the bench and I'll explain how to do what you need to do to end up with this really important tool that you can make out of stuff that you have laying on your house or even around your house or on your feet maybe or on someone's clothesline or who knows what anyway let's go to the bench all right so here we are on the bench let's take a look at what I'm doing here first off meet lefty the junk pile arch top the start of it it's got a Florentine cutaway it is a left-handed version of the Mississippi mudslide which I'll give you a link to that playlist up there it's a start to finish build of what basically looks like an ES-175 with a Florentine cutaway, nice thick body. Um, and then this is the neck for it, it came in. Now, some necks come in finished with, a, with the pattern cut out. This came in what's called a paddle. And so I just took and traced this piece of paper off this Harmony Monterey. It's a big, wide uh, peg head or headstock. And then I'm, I'm just going to cut it down on a band so I do what I need to do to get it the size I want. Notice that it doesn't violate any Gibson or Fender or anybody else's patents. And um, so that's going to work. Now, what we're doing with this guitar is we are going to finish it. Now, the Mississippi Mudslide had mississippi mud and mississippi um river water and a base material and it has some violin stuff on it and and since i've given you that playlist uh a, a minute ago i will give you the specific link to the finish we did there now this is going to be a different finish so let's swing this out of the way we'll get the vice out of the way um yeah this is the stumac workstation uh, I'm going to burn another uh, I card up there. I did a video, a review on this thing, but here you can see it comes in pretty handy. Now, in order to stain this neck and the body on this kit guitar, 
we're going to do what's called a French polish, a French polish. Now, there's not much left on this one. Th thanks, Fred Wallachie. Uh, but they used a French polish finish technique on violin. So what you do is you take shellac and you put a base coat on and then you rub in a circular polish and go round and round and put coats on and that's the technique. Now what we're going to do with this guitar is we are going to use some shellac that we made out of Kino, what they call Kino, from red iron bark eucalyptus. So what this tree does is when it's young, it flexes around and oozes this stuff out and coats the bark in the outer trunk and it makes it rock hard and it's a natural process of the tree. Okay, so similar to what uh, the product is that you make shellac out of, there's a a bug that's kind of like a scale insect that sucks the sap out of branches of trees and then its body is coated with basically what comes out the other end it's a lot of tree sap and sugars and things like that so um, the eucalyptus tree doing this naturally kind of saves us a step of course we don't have all the bug parts and things and so I got an idea that this stuff oozes out of trees I collected some and we did an episode about making shellac out of eucalyptus globulus. No, eucalyptus cideroxalin, which is red iron bark eucalyptus. And there's an episode up there. Now, I made the shellac here. You see it. And it coats on wood this color. So our guitar is ultimately going to be this color you see that and it'll look good with the trim we have for it and um, the theming I'm going to do but once you put a base coat on like this then you do the French polish technique which is um, basically rubbing on shellac which is sticky but you can't just put it on like this because it will stick so there's a way that you daub it on and do circles like this and I'm going to show you how to make that applicator right now. So I've got a number of things here. Uh, the first is I strained um, the shellac mix because there were a few pieces of uh, bark and, and bigger chunks of this kind of stuff. I'm going to want this to work as basically a base for this concoction I'm going to make. The next thing is you need some cotton, um, and so cotton balls, um, strips of cotton. I actually have some cotton from a field in Mississippi. Thank you, Deke Rivers. He always sends me river water and things like that. So I'm going to take some of this, and I'm just going to pull most of the covering off of it. And what's funny is there's seeds in here still. And I've actually sprouted this stuff. So you, you just pull the seeds out like so. And we're going to get a wad of that. Let me get this done off camera. All right. There's the last seed. Cotton seeds are pretty small. See? And out of a bowl, um, which there were about three bowls, they emerge out of this. It's called a square because when this is growing, it kind of actually looks like a square, but the cotton emerges out of here and out of the three or four that I've had here, I got about 20, 22 seeds here. Um, you can actually put this in a plastic bag with paper towel and sprout the seeds in about five days. Check your local agricultural rules before you start sprouting seeds from other places into your locale because they're worried about the bull weevil you know that song if you watch my channel you sh you sure do anyway you end up with a wad of cotton like this you can do this with cotton balls so we're going to use this uh 
to saturate with some of this resin that's left over and we're going to charge this with some of the shellac itself but we need something to hold this so there's a couple of things that we want to do um, first off we want a piece of cotton used cotton it needs to be cotton so i'm going to cut up this shirt here and get a, a square about this big that i can put the cotton into so we've got our chick flick teal scissors and we're just going to cut a square out of this cotton shirt and we can get a few of these out of it. it just needs to be big enough to hold that wad of cotton we have there we go that right there will do so we just turn this over and we put our cotton in here like so okay so we'll take our cotton supply and put those away for another day because we'll need to be, build several of these because if the color of your shellac uh, is different you want to make a different setup so um, we've got a piece of linen here and we've got a wool sock these are very important things but the first thing we want to do here is now we want to charge this this will become the base of what makes up the French polishing applicator so we're going to take this rubber band off and this screening that we've done here you can tell that this stuff dries up and creates a barrier so I'm actually gonna to have to pry this off it looks like it's almost like a cast really and that's going to be important to the structural integrity of what we're doing but I'm going to take this and move the cotton a little bit and dump it like so and some of the bigger chunks of wood or whatever I can pop that off there like that I can also take some of the fines off of this crushed up Kino sap and put it in there like that okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this little bottle you can get these at most pharmacies or big brand stores. I'm going to fill this up because I'm going to want to put a couple drops of this in here and also some Everclear. What we're doing is we're basically making a small batch of shellac that we're going to trap inside this cotton. So I need two of these, one filled with shellac and another filled with Everclear. Okay, so we've got some of the shellac which again was made uh, four parts ever clear to one part eucalyptus kino and dissolved for the better part of a week in this little bottle here and then we have some ever clear you want to remember that ever clear and alcohol vaporize off so you got to keep them sealed one last time i want to show you this was a paper towel that i strained the homemade shellac mixture through here to get the, the solids out of it the particles that were left and it turns into this it's a it's a pretty durable i would say that's sti stiffer than duct tape anyway now that we've got our little square of cloth here we're going to get everything together like so and move some of the bigger chunks out of the way here and we are going to put the cotton on here like so now we're going to charge this meaning get this whole process going again by putting a few drops of our shellac here 
I'm going to be okay with it here and be liberal, not like liberal can, just, just liberal. And then I'm going to put a few drops of Everclear here and that'll get things going like so. Now, I'm going to take this wool sock, needs to be a wool sock, and we're going to take our Chick Flick Teal scissors and we're going to cut the wool sock like so. We're going to leave the toe on. That's what we're going to need to do because we're going to open this up and we're going to put our concoction here. into the wool sock like this okay now once you start getting this like so this turns into kind of a dauber now most important part you're going to want to take a piece of linen because you're actually going to be taking what's coming out of here after a while and we'll charge it again and make sure it's good to go. We don't want it to be sopping wet, but we want it to be charged up good with shellac because we're going to be taking this and going like this in never ending circles. You don't pick this up and down and whatever fabric you're using is going to leave marks in the finish. So this is kind of how it works. So you don't want to use a wool sock what you want to use is you want to use linen. So we're going to put, we're going to end up keeping our applicator in this jar because again, alcohol will vaporize off, but we're going to take this linen napkin that we have here and we're going to fold it in four parts. And we're basically going to use one of these to wrap around our wool sock and the rest of it like so. All right, we've cut it in half already. And this will give us the quarter we need. We'll take the one with the oak leaf on it. And now we will put cotton balls, cotton material, wool sock, and now linen over here. And there's our applicator. When we go to use it, we will charge it with a little bit of Everclear, like so. And I'm going to let this sit for a couple days. But what will happen is the shellac will start to bleed out of here. Of course, I could charge it with a little bit of shellac right now so we can kind of see what's happening. You don't need a ton now, but you see how that soaks in. And yeah, these little bottles are great because They'll let it drop out at a time if you don't squeeze anything. But you just charge this like this. And then you just want to take and pull this tight like this and get this nice and, you can feel the alcohol, but you get it nice like this. And then the technique, let me get this stuff put up before I spill it all. The technique is you go to a piece of wood that's had a couple of base coats and you just basically go around like this. Now you don't want to stop because every time you stop it will leave a mark. If you do need to stop and get off an edge, you come off the edge. You don't just pick it up like this. Same way, enter from this. And you'll do this and this applicator is actually putting on shellac so you'll get coats of it since this is not a waxed shellac 
or it doesn't have oil in it per se. It's a spirit-based shellac. You can actually do several coats a day with a couple of hours of drying time between it, but this is the French polish technique that we are going to be using on Lefty, the junk pile arch top. So what we'll end up doing with this is we'll put a couple base coats on. We're gonna get this sanded. They come out of the factory uh, pretty well ready to go. We're put a, gonna put a reamer down in here and get this stuff out of the way and make sure there's nothing for it to hang up. I'm gonna use wipe all 80 paper towels. That's a good one to use. And then I'll get down to 1200 grit uh, sandpaper so everything is nice and smooth put two base coats of the shellac on it and then start the French polish and you're gonna like it. Um, the neck will be the same when you're done using this. Wrap it up. Feel free to charge it. Now your shellac is gonna last you a couple months. It's not, it doesn't last forever. But we'll just charge it up like that. Since we just made this one, it's going to take a little bit to do that. And then once it's charged up, we're going to put a couple drops of Everclear on here too right now. And then we're going to put it away in this nice little jar with the tablecloth top. Wasn't that easy? Um, We've got this one charging. Um, I'm gonna end up putting, again, once I get the paddle cut out and the headstock and the sanding done with down to 1200 uh, grit, we'll be putting the base coats on. Don't forget to get a reamer. Don't use a drill. Reamer takes care of these, the uh, fuzz around these holes really nice, but we're gonna get the base coats on this and then use our French polish technique once the guitar is put together and it's time to finish it off. So watch for that episode. It'll be in a playlist. We're gonna call this one Lefty the Junk Pile Art Stop. Hey, give me a like, subscribe. Don't forget to send me an email. My email is always at the end of the episode. Send me an email if there's something uh, you want to see or have a question or even a suggestion for a topic for a new episode. With that, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. With